Welcome to Ear Biscuits, the podcast where two lifelong friends talk about life for a long time. I'm Rhett. And I'm Link. This week at the round table of dim lighting, draw near. Uh-oh. Demons. Uh, hey. What? Draw near people who are interested in hearing about our latest video where we hired an actual true life exorcist slash demonologist from TikTok in order to um, advise and protect us as we play Dungeons and Dragons for the first time in a video that was completely documented on the resurrected. Hmm. Ooh, interesting. Or OG channel, youtube.com slash Rhett and Link. Yes, this is the second video, which in the uh, producer parlance is 102. Okay, yeah. You know. RLC 102, you're, Rhett and Link channel, that's, that's episode two. The technical basically, t- term for it around these well, parts. And it's just great to be getting these videos out there, you know? It's like we're trying to... You know, we're not hitting the schedule, but we're trying to do it once a month. And we were, when we hatched this idea, we were very excited about it. But I'm interested to talk about the ideas that the video tees up. You know, so this is not really, there's like, yeah, we'll talk some behind the scenes about how we made the video. But the ideas and the beliefs that we're dancing with in this video. I think there's good conversation to be had in that realm. This is one of the first videos, I would say maybe the first video outside of an ear biscuit where we're directly addressing or using something that kind of comes from our faith POV for content. This is something we never did no back in the day, right? We 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 didn't we didn't know how to go about things even when we were in the early days making videos and we were still thinking sort of in a like Christian mission mindset, but we were like, we're not gonna do that directly through our video. We're gonna do that through the avenues that our videos create for us. And then of course, uh, we lost our faith and became apostates. Uh, and so that particular strategy went out the window. But there were those many years where we were just not talking about what was happening, the loss of faith and all this stuff. Yeah, it was complicated. It, it didn't translate into content directly. And there's no... Or readily. We don't ever intend to make Good Mythical Morning an outlet for these types of things. Like, we're, you know, we're not gonna... I'm, I'm not, well, you know, we might do something like, okay, we're gonna bring some psychics on to GMM and test them in some fun game or something like that. But it's always just to have fun and uh, to create something lighthearted and we're not trying to take on controversial subjects and not kind of delve deep into like our perspectives. But this is the first piece of content that the whole thing starts from this because of who we are, where we come from, and the mindset that we bring to something, it kind of sets the stage for exploring this thing in an entertaining way. I'm trying to remember how we came up with the idea. Do you remember? Well, Link, I have evidence. Oh, yeah? Because it something clicked into place. Yeah, it was, it was, I could not remember this. I can't remember. Uh, but I went back to the doc. So basically, there was this document that had just a, ab, just a huge brain dump, brain dump of, vid- of, of video concepts. And there was one of them that was called Dungeons and Dragons. And here's what it reads Growing up in the evangelical church, we were convinced that any kid playing D&D was regularly communing with the devil. Um, We enter the dungeon and face the dragon. Along the way, we unpack the phenomenon of parents and specific cultures spewing misinformation based on fear and lack of understanding. So it was like, (laughs) you know. Is that it? So that that was the D&D idea. That was the pitch? It wasn't really a pitch, you know. It's just like I had this long list of things that was just like, eh, most of them weren't fully formed. And then there was a second list, which was less defined general ideas. Mm -hmm. And it just says, uh, faith related. Given our public reputation around leaving the Christian faith, this seems like fertile ground. A couple of starter ideas. Uh, 
get to know a Christian who says that they regularly have supernatural experiences, like this TikToker who claims oh, yeah. to deal in demons, demon eraser. Oh, you had, oh, so. Yeah, you, so, I, so I. Yeah, we were thinking that because you watch all of, and you allude to this in the video, that like the algorithms serve up spiritual there's a, there's really good idea that I'm content. Not, I'm not what? going to. Oh, you just read another idea? Yeah. Okay. That well, it's written now. down. Yeah. You can tell yeah, me, yeah, yeah, yeah. you can remind me of it later. What was I saying? Uh, I watch this kind of content. Yeah, so the algorithm gives you yeah. more of it, and so there was an idea there of... But there were two separate ideas. Yeah, and it wasn't, can we see an exorcism, but I know that we talked about that, because there are people who will post, you, you're going to have to tell me, exorcisms on the internet, you can watch, the, you can watch these things. Yeah, so I would say that most of the content that I get served is just um, like Christian or ex-Christian content in general. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I talk about the algorithm in the in the main video, the Dungeons and Dragons video, but the interesting thing that I found is that the TikTok algorithm knows, TikTok knows that I'm an ex-evangelical. Instagram's algorithm is not as sophisticated as the TikTok algorithm. And it thinks that I'm a Christian. Interesting. And so on Instagram, <laughs> I just get like Christian content and I watch it because I'm, you know, I'm still fascinated. I, I, I'm probably gonna make a video about this, about this, cause it's a phenomenon of people who are no longer a part of it, who are still fascinated by it. You're a Christian on Instagram and you're an ex-believer on TikTok. Yeah. I mean, it, it, for you me, that's proof. Life, man. That's proof right there. Because I'll just get like. But you're still watching the 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 sincere Christian content on Instagram. You're just watching it just to keep an eye out, or are you watching the stuff that's a little more entertaining? It's entertaining to me. I'm entertained by. It. In fact, Jesse recently tweeted. Uh, she was like, "My husband loves to watch." Christians do takedown videos of him of and, you and laugh along the way while she says I cuss like someone who learned to cur curse in their 30s because <laughs> she gets so upset about it and, I, and I'm like legitimately yeah. I'm so into it I love seeing them uh, uh, the latest thing they've come up with or the way they somebody's kind of like taking set up. taking their passion and their energy and they're directing it towards taking you down that's well that's well, pretty great let me say that <laughs> let me say that let me just say that the last for it the la it's not just me. The last one I watched was mostly about the fact that that you became Topa Chica. Uh, oh, really? And that was your that's your latest like boy. You really crossed the line when you did trip drag. <laughs> like the sexual deviance that you are now endorsing openly uh, for all the children to completely lose their way, like. You've, you, dude, you've crossed the line. And meanwhile, I'm over here looking at cat videos, dog videos. And um, that was the latest one that I sometimes watched. like wolves or mountain lions trapped in like a snare, and then somebody has to come along and get them out of it. Any drag mountain lions? Nope. Interesting. Nope. I di I did my thing. I'm good with it. I'm really good with what I did. Well, a lot and of people are not. Now I'm moved on to this the one next pastor thing. is not. He's very not happy about it. Really? Did he did he cut the footage of it? Yes. Oh, so he paid, he paid for the society? No, he cut to the trailer. He showed the trailer from the society. Okay. At first I was like, hold on, this this guy posting exclusive society content? This is what a lot of people do. They don't, they read, they get enough of it to say that they just want to use it at, at, to make a point, but they don't want to sit there and like actually watch the content in its entirety and draw like an, within the a contextual situation, draw a complete conclusion you know i've seen enough of this to now instead of see all of it and yes it is behind a paywall sorry um preacher uh whoever you are but like and i've seen enough of this to now make perpetuate just the conclusions that i'm coming to that are like a little short sighted i mean if you haven't watched the whole thing and yet you're going to take it down it's like come on at least give it just at least, at least give me a I don't, chance. I at least give Topo Chica a chance. Just so you understand, I don't think this pastor watching the entire video is going to change his mind. I think it's only yeah, going to make him true. more upset. Yeah, maybe he would have, I, I would have liked for him to see the conversation that I had. I'm sure it wouldn't matter. Okay. 
Uh, you know, I'm sorry. I'm just saying I don't think his mind is open to that. So, but, but this was two different ideas, right? So, um, well, yes, I end up watching a lot of this content and I'm just genuinely fascinated by it. And I'm not just, not just the stuff that's about us being taken down, but like, I watch a lot of like- Most I, of it is not about no, you no, or us, right? No, 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 Just no. to be totally clear. Right. Uh, I watch a lot of ex-evangelical, like deconstruction stuff and, and then like, um, there, there's a couple of people that are really good about sort of breaking down certain things. And one of my favorite guys is, uh, I think his name is Dan McClellan, but he he's like a Bible sc- scholar and he'll like take something that somebody says and then kind of like give the correct perspective on things. But occasionally this demon stuff will pop up. And the thing that was popping up more often than Demon Eraser was there's an exorcist uh, who's an older guy? I think he's got a church in Arizona. Bob Larson, and this guy's been around for years, and he's older, meaning in his sixties, or yeah, okay. Yeah. And he's like in a church context doing these crazy exorcisms, and his content is just posting the exorcisms. He's got like a cross, and he's like placing it on people's heads, and people are convulsing and doing all this crazy stuff, and you know. So, I, so it's I, like church footage. Well, it's not church footage. It's not. It's he's filming it so that he will p- be able to post these exorcisms. Okay, it's like it's all produced. It's like this is what he does, and they and he's doing it in a crowd. He's doing it in a in a. He's church. doing it like some church and wherever he is at, and, and there's like people coming up, and there's like people holding these people back, and they're going crazy, and and he's eventually like casting them out, and then they're okay at the end. You know, they all kind of go the same. So there was that guy, and then I guess Demon Eraser. I'm a demon. Uh, it's really okay. the, the account so is Demon Erasers, but I call Brian the Demon demons. Eraser. Brian is sort of the face of Demon, demon Erasers. Nephilim. He's the face of the conglomerate, as yeah. I called it. <laughs> in, and in the video. so I, I was just fascinated because it, you know well, you got Bob, Bob Larson, who's an older guy who's been doing this thing for a while, but then you've got Brian, who's a younger guy whose main outlet is you know modern social media and TikTok, right? And his account wasn't very old; it didn't have too many videos. But when, so when we were in one of our brainstorming meetings. You showed Demon Eraser to me. Well, but before that, we were like, oh, we wanted to do the Dungeons and Dragons thing. Everybody was kind of into this idea. We didn't, and we were like, this is great because the movie's coming out. If we could get it to come out around the time the movie's coming out, that's even better, you know, tie Mm -hmm. in with that zeitgeist thing. But we didn't really have an angle. It was like Rhett and Link play Dungeons and Dragons. And as we were getting into these videos, we wanted to have more sensational angles that are more fun to watch, right? And then that was when we were like, well, what if we combine these two ideas? That was the breakthrough when it was like, we can hire an exorcist. He has a damn form on his website. This is it. And it was just, and you know, like. Well, you're jumping ahead though, because he was, he was an archetype. Yeah, we were like, we're gonna get somebody, somebody like and you this can, guy. Like we talked to the rest of the team, we we're like, you guys can research and if there's somebody else to be found, like we can pick the right person. I never had any idea that he would be A, you know, willing to do it, and B, just up the road in Bakersfield. Like the fact that that worked out. So we felt like it was a huge breakthrough. It's like, yes, we have cracked this video. It's not just it would be fun to document us learning how to play and talking about our upbringing, but creating an honest experiment. Like I just started to get really excited because I was like, this sounds hilarious, but it also sounds kind of scary. It sounds risky on a number of levels. There's a lot of unknowns. And so then it became less about it being funny and more about it tapping into my curiosity. What will happen if we really do this in an open-ended way? Like, what's the story going to be? I definitely knew that we did not want to make a prank video. That was that was very obvious to both of us yeah. from the very beginning. But it was also very obvious that this concept could easily be a joke on any number of people, you know, everybody involved or just one person, you know, people, who's in on the joke? Well, and we're like, well, everybody's in on the joke because it's not a joke. 
and it's and it's important to us. But we knew that it would be entertaining. That we're approaching it, or we were hoping as it would a be. like as an uh, as an honest experiment. The yeah, with such a great hook, and yeah, I didn't want to manipulate it. You know, it's like I'm very happy with where the where we landed with this video. First of all, it's forty minutes. I'm like more than that, I think. Last over forty, but it's like. Yeah, we're making we're making things that I think require this amount of time. You know, it feels less like something you can just watch and blow over and forget it ever happened. You know, it's a piece. Th that's the type of thing that I'm excited about to do too. And we're doing what we did in the first video, which is we're talking about it before it gets released. Right. And so we don't can know only, what can, people are going to react. So to. I, I'm, I'll make a couple of predictions that may uh, now that the video is out when you're watching this, you can you can tell me if I was right or wrong. And then after that, can we just talk about demons more? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Um, I think because it it will make people uncomfortable. Right, watching it's an uncomfortable situation. That's the thing that's exciting to us about it. You've got a guy who thinks that what we're doing is a demonic activity, mm -hmm. and we're doing it right there in front of him, and we're literally turning to him to consult with him. And we've invited three players: a dungeon master and two players who are established. You know, you can watch their content online. Uh, it was I did not meet them until that day. We sat. Basically, we sat down at the table with them and introduced them to Brian the Demon Eraser. Right. So it's like, yeah, it puts them in this. I don't know how they're going to react. Are, well, there are they some were, people. They were prepped. They were, they were, it was explained what was going to happen to them. They weren't blindsided by it, but, but also it, didn't know what their posture was going to be towards it. But people, there is a certain percentage of the world and a certain percentage of our audience that is not comfortable. With making any, people uncomfortable with anything that is uncomfortable, and so and I listen. I can't. That that's your prerogative. Uh, we that's not where we're at. Like we wouldn't do this if we if we didn't like the idea of it, right? Uh, like I showed the video to Shepard, and he just loved it. You know, and he's more like me. It's like the the un, the discomfort and the fact that this oh you put you created this social situation that was like what is going to happen like that's the thing that gets us excited yeah that's why we made all those local commercials with people and we made weird commercials with people who'd never been on right. camera before like we love that stuff when you don't know how it's going to be received yet you know that it's going to be talked about is an exciting it's an invigorating place to be now. What's the other thing people are gonna give feedback on? You got other predictions, I'm sure. Like some people are, they're gonna be in the, they have a, their beliefs in, in to some degree align with Brian the Demon Eraser. I don't even think right? it's necessarily about what, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about how, you know, how our beliefs, where they line up and where they used to line up and whether they did or not line up. But that's a part, that's a group of people well, uh, that are on some spectrum. And then there's like, D avid D and D enthusiast players who are like, they're going to have their own opinions. And by the way, some of them might not have anything to do with the exorcist to a demonologist part of it all. It might just be like, you didn't do us, you didn't do us justice. Like I felt like I wanted. Well, there might be criticism to just the just the D and D play of it all and how we that was edited. I don't know. Um, this, one of the things I'm anticipating is because I see it so often, again, I watch takedowns. And one of the things that I consistently see is when I feel like I'm actually being really fair handed when it comes to talking about Christianity. And I try to, I, you know, cause I have so many people in my life who are still Christians, still evangelicals, still conservative evangelicals. Yeah, and, that and you I, love. And I love them and we have meaningful relationships and meaningful conversation and I haven't like pushed them out of my life. And I, res you know, I disagree, but I respect where they're at and realize that they come to their conclusions through their own process. And I'm not, I'm much less evangelistic than I ever was as a Christian, but I think there's something about, this is my theory at least, I think there's a lot of projection that happens when certain Christians watch us talk about these things because they assume that our main goal and anytime we bring up Christianity is to just tear it down and pull people away, right? And sure, I'm tempted at times uh, when, when we talk about these things 
to do that. But more often than not, I'm just kind of just presenting my perspective on something and being like this, I'm just, you know, I'm, I got a lot of outlets where we just talk about things. The goal is not to change people's minds. The goal is to just share where we're coming from. But I think that what people are going to think because they tend to be like, oh, here's rep bashing Christianity again. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about my album or I'll talk about new merch that I've got and kind of explain the symbolism behind it. And then the, some of the comments will be, oh, you're bashing Christianity again. It's like, what? I, I don't, I didn't, I don't see where I did that. So I think because there's this projection of thinking that if you're talking about something, you're, you're trying to persuade people, you're tearing something down, people will th- assume, oh, here, Rhett and Link are now officially beginning the, their videos where they tear Christianity down directly, and they did it with this D&D video. And like, that's not what we're thinking at all. We're like, oh, we want to play Dungeons & Dragons because we weren't ever, to, ever able to do it. There are people who legitimately believe that Dungeons & Dragons is a demonic thing wouldn't it be cool to put all those things together in the same room? Won't that be fun, <laughs> interesting? Who, who knows what's going to happen? Like that's our motivation, right? But we didn't. We never sought to put Brian the Demon Eraser, Exorcist Demonologist, in the position of representing all people of Christian faith, right? Uh, and I don't even think. Well, so we're not interested in doing that. And I don't think we did that. So we're going to get into like how we like how our beliefs interact with everything that we were that was happening. But I do think there's one other group, right? There's the group that's like you didn't you were too sympathetic to this guy. Exactly. So it's like there's some people who are like, well, you're using him as like a straw man to take down Christianity. Not the case. And then there's other people that's like. You got to. You should have gone with the for the jugular for this guy. You should have made him into a complete butt of the joke. Right. And yeah, you know, we just wanted to present him for who he is. And every uh, member of the audience is just coming to their own conclusions. This is not a propaganda piece in any way. But like, I think that's the other criticism. Oh, you should have taken him down hard. Or there might be people who's like, you gave this guy a platform. Gave him a platform. Now people know about his account. Now people are going to go there and, and he's going to remove their demons. It's like, well, that may happen. I think that could happen. I think ultimately my answer to all of that is that I know where our hearts are at and I know what our motivation for making the video is and I'm very comfortable with that. And if I were to get into a place where I tried to anticipate every segment of an audience's, uh, you know, perspective and anticipate their reaction and try to accommodate their reaction in the content, we would never make any videos. We would, well, especially <laughs> not not of this nature. And this is just yeah. exciting. I mean, and so we set the ground, the foundation, the groundwork with the team to help them understand like the parameters of what we were interested in and everything that we've just talked about. And so then we are kind of, we kind of entrust everyone to do their part. So like a, just one example, I mean, you could look at anything and see it's not just everybody who touches the video and who's worked on the team like has an impact on every single moment of it. That's another part of the fun of it. But here's one example. Once it cuts to the montage of Roker from USA um, Today. the Demon Eraser at the beginning, and it's just his TikTok exists. footage, Demons go to church. you'll notice that it's church. just a montage of his footage. Jesus. It doesn't, I don't and this is, a, this is a Ben choice to say, because he told me Christian after the fact. Like, I, did, I saw the edit and I was like, this works. But like, what I didn't think about was, well, you know what, you could have, you could have kept cutting back to us in this, in like our office doing our talking head thing, and we could have provided commentary on it, or it could have just cut back to us and we're making a funny face. And you could easily get an additional, you could get a laugh out of our reaction to it, or you, you could get information. Maybe it's not just a laugh. You could get information um, about what we thought about him, but what we wanted to do was just present him, and it's a montage, so we put. I think it's still in the cut. There's a note at the bottom, something to the effect of, all of these clips are taken out of context. And which, do we really have to say that for a montage? But we did because it's like, hey, 
this is what he puts out on the internet, and here's like an edited version of it that's it's it's pruned and primed for a reaction, but we're not going to spoon feed you a reaction that you can just uh, emulate our reaction or disagree with our reaction. Come to your own conclusion. Yeah. I think that was important. Um, I don't know why I said I think that was important. But Link, that was important. Was that important? Yeah. Well, so I do think it was, I, I think it was important to talk about all these things because there's a lot of pitfalls is what I was trying to go with. No, that no. I, I, again, who knows? Who knows? Like you can we never anticipate. Future us that, knows. That's the weird thing about making these videos is like, <laughs> what if it's like so many people got mad about this for this thing that we didn't anticipate? It's right. like, I don't know. That's part of the excitement. I'm having to embrace that. I, because I have no other choice, but I'm not going to stop making stuff. We're not going to start throwing things out there and but seeing the, what but, happens. But like you said, this was, this is in new territory. Ear Biscuits is brought to you by BetterHelp. You like to getting to know people. What if yeah. those people are yourself? Oh, that's interesting. You know, because you can get to know yourself in therapy. It's a great way to say, oh, that's why I... I do that. That's, yes. and of course, I do that on this podcast a lot. I try to learn more about myself by bouncing myself off of you. Yeah, just live. But um, I also do that mm-hmm. a lot in therapy, and it's extremely helpful. Yes, therapy is a great way to help you get a deeper understanding of yourself because you're always changing and evolving. Good point. Uh, and we're big fans of therapy. Can we make that even more clear? I don't think so. And we want therapy to be accessible to everyone, and so does BetterHelp. Yeah, you know, one of the things that therapy has been so helpful uh, with me is that there are these different roles that you play in, in your life, right? So I'm a friend, I'm a husband, I'm a father, I'm a business owner. And sometimes when I start talking about those different roles that I play, I'll find, oh, there's a lot of anxiety or difficulty, frustration in this one thing. And if I hadn't gone to therapy, had my appointment with my therapist and actually talked through this, uh, it would have just sat under the surface and maybe gone unresolved for weeks. And who knows, it began affecting me physically. I mean, that happens with me sometimes when I don't deal with something. Um, right. That's one of the things, and one of the areas that therapy has been so helpful for me in. Yeah, so if you're thinking about starting therapy, Give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, so you can have your sessions anywhere you're comfortable, and it's suited to your schedule. You just fill out a questionnaire, and they will match you to a licensed therapist that meets your specific needs, and you can always switch therapists at no extra cost. So discover your potential with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash ear today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash ear. Uh, so to kind of establish a little bit about what, uh, you know, how would we have interacted with, with, with Brian and his beliefs 20 years ago? Let's go, let's go back 20, let's go back 30 years ago. Yeah. Well, we already said we never played it. And the only reason wasn't b- for, for beliefs. It was just like our friends didn't play it really. It wasn't, we didn't have a lot of opportunities to play. It wasn't like, hey kid, you wanna play Dungeons and Dragons? And we were just like, no, I, I don't wanna do crack, I wanna go roller skating. You know, it wasn't Well, one everything of those vibes. that we thought about it was just based on a few things that had been said to us, right? Very, very prevalent within the evangelical community at the time was that, you know, this was on the level of heavy metal music, but worse, right? So th- these are things that are from Satan. They celebrate satanic things and they invite demonic forces into your life. In general was what we thought, but we grew up Baptist, right? And then non-denominational, basically kind of Baptist. Mm-hmm. but. In that world that we grew up in, which is, you know, what you would say is not a Pentecostal church, just to, just to illustrate the point that Christianity is not monolithic whatsoever, we believed theoretically in the existence of demons, but we would have said that they were not very active, at least not in America. Like, there was, there's always this, uh, there's this sort of unspoken thing that, like, 
the areas in the world where people are kind of messing around with um, animistic, you know, religions and native religions and stuff like that, like, oh, over in Africa or in South America, like that's where the demonic activity is because their religions are like really tied into it or whatever. So if you're a missionary and you go over to those places, you might see some demonic activity. But in our circles, it wasn't like, oh, somebody's sick, that's a demon. Somebody's got a mental Ill- illness. No, no, that's that's possession. There were never we never witnessed an exorcism. Our preachers never did exorcisms. When you pray for somebody to get healed, you don't talk about demons. You might talk about like the activity of the devil and what the devil is doing to scheme. But we always saw demons and the devil as a bit more sophisticated. It was like, oh, well, the, you know, the greatest trick the devil ever pulled is convincing the world that he didn't exist. That was the mindset that we were in. It was well, just did like- you, Did you just quote C.S. Lewis? Because according to the demon eraser, he's demonic. No, I quoted uh, the usual suspects. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin well, I, Spacey, to be, uh, <laughs> to, to be exact, I think. I thought it, I thought you were in mere Christianity. Well, first of all, maybe that's that, maybe C.S. Lewis did talk about that. But So we would have said that the- that there was much more demonic activity at, say, a liberal university where they're teaching things that undermine traditional ideas. That's where the that's the, the sophistication of the devil is such that he's going to use the intellectualism of mankind to unravel the godly ways of thinking. That was what we thought. We weren't like, but not oh, this person's going to get possessed right. and we're going to like throw some holy water on him. Like, no, we we thought that that was probably BS. Even as Christians, just letting you know, we never delved into this. Demons are super active and they're on people and they're in people. Now, I did know people who thought that and and had experiences that we can talk about. Oh, let's talk about that. But one more thing was that we missed the Harry Potter cavalcade when that first, when the books first started coming out. It's like we were already too old for that. But in our church environment, the younger kids were discouraged, if not told, not to read those books because they referenced things that were of the devil, witchcraft. Yeah, it was like wizardry. Stay stay, stay away. Don't become enamored with that stuff. Don't become enamored with it. It opens a door to you being open to more of satan or his demons influences so and we did believe that satan or i guess his demons like we never talked about demons we just talked about satan as if satan was everywhere all at once and he was um or it was i don't know what the pronoun uh, i think he i have probably what i haven't asked satan his pronouns lucifer lucifer um they I mean, I'm, t- I'm just saying according to the bible they yeah okay <laughs> they tempted you I'm using they. Okay, I he, like I like that. <laughs> uh, Satan would tempt me uh-huh. if I wanted to do something that I shouldn't do. I'd be like, mm, "Stand behind me, Satan." Yeah, yeah. We be- but we didn't really give. But I wasn't scared of Satan because I didn't. I just felt like I was causing enough trouble, and I just felt like it was from myself anyway. I just I didn't really fixate on the Lucifer of it all. You know, yeah. you know. I knew I wasn't going to hell because I, I, you know, I had accepted Jesus. We End also thought that you couldn't be possessed if you were a Christian because the Holy Holy Spirit is inside of you, mm-hmm. so that there was no place for the demons to go because they get okay. inside there and they see God. They can see Jesus in your heart and they have to leave. <laughs> you know, right. that's what no more doing. room at the end. Yeah, <laughs> right. Jesus is taking up shop here. He learned his lesson. You know, Jesus. He's going to get in early. I ain't gonna keep sleeping on them mangers. A manger is is what livestock eat out of. Right. Yeah. Well, we don't. I mean, yeah. This isn't a Christmas episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just explaining my joke. That yeah, yeah. Usually, when you have to explain, a Jesus joke, learned his lesson. Yeah, it was, I know it was, it was great. A pretty good. Joke. I didn't think you had to explain it. It was great. <laughs> it was great to begin with. But Sa- we, uh, and I think Satan did. Satan approve of that joke? I, I don't, don't know. know. Did he? Did he tempt me to? Am I an agent of Satan in the fact that I made that joke? Uh, Some people might believe I am. Oh, yeah. Lots of people believe that we are. But we did know people who um, I knew well and I trusted 
mm-hmm. and who I believe are honest, who had who had experiences with demons, uh, and when they, you know, conveyed those experiences to me, I'm still convinced to this day that whatever it is they experienced, at least as it manifested itself in their minds, was real to them. Give me details. Um, people who were missionaries, okay. people who had been to you know other parts of the world. Which interestingly, let me. I'll just let me. A little sidebar here. Uh, you know, first of all, I think that Christian missions are based in white white supremacy. You know, it's pretty clear that that's in the history of Christian mission is very much a white supremacist thing, um, where you bring your philosophy and you come in with the understanding that the brown people who you are visiting and what they believe is inferior to what you believe. And also you contextualize it within your own tradition and say the things that they worship are actually the bad parts of your religion. They're, it's satanic. You, know, you contextualize yeah. it within your framework. Mm-hmm. And then you come in and you adjust, then you justify eradicating their belief. Now, up until very recently, you you also uh, justified eradicating them as people. You said that they weren't even people, and you eradicated them, and you established. You know, look at uh, what Spain and what the Spanish and the the British did in the Americas. Yeah, right. and if you if you're watching the the, the series 1923, which I, I don't watch Yellowstone, I've never gotten into it, but I'm into the prequels. 1923 got, I mean, has a heartbreaking, visceral storyline uh, that explores this. And I, yeah, okay. So I, I watched the first two episodes, I think. So I haven't and gotten it done to slow down. So the, so interestingly, there's so much of this thought and this underlying foundation that still is very active within the church. And this is stuff that was I had no idea about when I was a part of it. But hold on, you were telling me about the demons, your missionary friends who saw demons. That's what I'm getting back to. Well get back to that. I'm setting the stage for it. Good. Because I find it interesting that uh that you go into these situations where you're interacting with brown and black people and their religions, and you're you're, you're assuming that what they're all involved in is witchcraft, and so I'm saying that that is very racist. <laughs> it's just very very racist. Let's just be honest about it. Now you may say, well, my Bible says that you know. It's either if you're not for God, you're against Him. So it's it's all within the Christian context. And I understand that your worldview, because I had the same worldview in the past. It was all it was all Christian. So it was like everything that wasn't of God was of Satan. But I just I think it's important to just tease that a little bit and question that and challenge that a little bit, because the fact is that when you come into a place. And the assumption is that what these people are doing in all their rituals and all their background and their culture, which is who they are, it defines who they are, is based in evil. That is, a, there's so many racist over un, under, undertones to that. Just a note, okay? But because because it's interesting that that's when you're when you're in a little bit more of a uh, you know Pentecostals or whatever like demons are everywhere. If you talk to Brian, like I don't know what his background is, but demons are everywhere. They're not just in those places. Mm-hmm, like he's got mm-hmm. demons everywhere. But from the right. pro- from where we were coming from, it's like well you might encounter some of these more uh, more obvious manifestations of demonic activity if you go into these places. I'm just making the point that that's coming from a racist place. But the people that I knew had those experiences. Um, so I'll just kind of go through a couple of the stories. There was one story in which someone was grabbed very like forcefully on the shoulder while they were sleeping, right? Okay. When they were in the in the in like the middle of sub-Saharan Africa, right? Uh, just the pit of demonic activity. But this is one of your f- friends yeah. who's describing being grabbed yeah. themselves. Uh, yes. Uh, there was someone um, who jumped like up onto something that they shouldn't have been able to jump up onto. Okay, and were they being, was the demon inside of them being uh, confronted 
in this moment? I don't remember. Okay. There was another person turned to my friend. They opened their mouths and f- fangs grew. Fangs grew. Fangs grew. So th- those are those are a couple of examples. Now, do I believe that this person and these people, because it's multiple people, uh, had experiences where they believe these things happen? Yes. Do I believe that supernatural things actually happen and there were fangs that were grown and there were supernatural heights that were achieved? Almost certainly not. Because it's so much more likely that based on the worldview and the perspective that they were bringing with themselves and the way that they saw the environment that they were in, the mind is incredibly powerful. You can rationalize so many things. You can convince yourself of so many things yeah. that it's just so much, because it's been demonstrated and you don't have to be like clinically insane to to, to see these things or to experience these things. Right. I, I, I think that it's just, my perspective is most likely there's no there there. The other option is that maybe there is some there there and there is some supernatural thing that people tap into and experience, but the conclusion that because those things happen and can be experienced by certain people, then it is necessarily true that this one particular perspective on those events, the Christian perspective is the right one. Like that's an unnecessary leap. Right, why, so can't, even, why can't it just be ghosts? Why can't it be a ghost that grabbed you? Or, I mean, the fangs thing, that's, that's a little different. I guess what I'm saying that's is like, like the, I wasn't there, and, and and I'm not saying, I may, I may, and I'm still open to being able to experience something that is a clear, and I, we, we've talked about this in my deconstruction update, that I'm open to experiencing quote unquote supernatural things or things that are beyond our understanding and things that defy, defy the laws of physics as we currently understand them. And I think the world would be a cooler, more interesting place if that is the case. But I can't prove it, and I definitely can't experience it. That experience it, and then base in my beliefs or endorse a belief system based on my experience because my experience is too unreliable. And so, because my experience is too unreliable, I don't think that someone else's experience is going to be more reliable than mine. You know, I'm not going to be like, okay, well, you experienced that. That's all I needed to hear. I just find it so interesting that like we believed in Satan, we believed in demons, we believed in angels because there's references in the Bible, you know. Uh, Apparently there's a lot of other extra Bible books that go into a lot more detail that give you a lot more fodder if you want to be a a demon eraser, you know, different books. But I just kind of wrote it off, you know, and... There were other churches where it's like they're doing lots of things that are just dictated by belief. Like, okay, if you believe that you can speak in tongues, well, you need to go to another type of church where that will be welcomed. And then it it happens a lot over there, but it never once happens here. You know, if you if you feel like that your sickness is a result of demonic activity, well, you better go over there. And I'm talking about like a maybe sometimes a few blocks away from a church that will believe something totally different than the ones, than what we believed, right? So it's just like, you get in the right group of people, it seems like you can start to explain that like if, it, you know, they work themselves up into, we all, we all get into groups and we work ourselves up into what we can agree on and what we can say yes and, or no don't, and find another place for that. And so then people start to group up and is it that the demons are grouping up with these people over here, and then everybody over here. So when you get sick and you're, you're in this group, it's because demons are getting you sick. But when you get sick over here, it's because, well, you're sick and you just need to go to, like, you need to seek medical attention. Well, I think from... And it didn't, but, but it was weird that we were in this strange place where it's like, I believed in Satan, I believed in demons, I believed in angels, but I, I just, we had a specific beliefs about it that wrote it off. Whereas other people played it up. Well, we definitely didn't think that anybody who was getting sick in any place was a result of demonic activity. Like we, right? We had a lot of criticisms of Pentecostal, you know, Pentecostal church and like charismatic thinking. Like we thought that the whole speaking in tongues thing was just an emotional 
thing, you know, again, it was just your mind playing tricks on you and like people can just work themselves up and like, are they really speaking in like the tongues of angels or whatever or other languages and that kind of thing? We didn't really believe that that was, we were, and we also believed, I guess we were dispensationalists in that we believed that those, there was a time and a place. There was a time for that. And it's past. And it was basically. For miracles. It was basically the book of Acts, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it was that initial. Okay. The initial establishing of the church, God would use. The, it's just so great. Signs and wonders. It's, it's so amazing. I mean, again, it's just an example of how you can rationalize anything. So as a Christian who was looking around and seeing a world that seemed natural, that did not seem supernatural. I didn't see evidence of demons. I didn't see evidence of Satan's activity, at least not in those really like- Fangs type of way. You know, yeah, this physical manifestation. Again, it was these things happening at a higher level. But because the Bible clearly describes demon possession and demons making people sick and demons being cast out of people and put into pigs that then go off cliffs. Jesus did that. And then there's these things that happen in the book of Acts. Because those things happen, and we believe that those are true historical accounts, we had to reconcile those things. And so the way we reconciled them, of course, we didn't reconcile them. Somebody, some other apologist, some Bible person yeah. uh, did it for us. Uh, they developed a- this idea that there's a dispensation, there's a time in which these things happen, and then it's over. And the, the reason we don't experience it is because God has changed the way that he works in the world. It's like, come on, guys. Isn't it so clear that you're just making it up as you go along? I mean, I'm sorry I didn't want to make it about this, but like, it's, I'm just saying, it makes you feel that way. It's when I look back on it, I'm like, go. I mean, come on. Or the, yeah, and it's like, if you go to a Pentecostal church and you're like, it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm really feeling this. I'm going to open my mouth and I'm going to pray in tongues. I'm going to do it. And then you go for it and it works. Well, you're in. Yeah. You know, you're in more. And if you go for it and it doesn't work, then it's like you start to think, maybe I need to go somewhere else. And then where I can I can surround my thinking with a belief structure that makes me feel okay with what I'm not doing. I don't know. It just seems it's I don't know. I, I always tend to go back to this. We all believe what we want to believe. I know I believe what I want to believe. I know that about me. I just know that's a big part of yeah. human nature. It's just an impulse. And it's just like, you can you can work some acrobatics. But yeah, so the dispensation of it all, that is the answer for us that like, I didn't worry about demons. I, di- I pra- practically didn't believe in de- demonic activity in, in my life or in my presence. Yeah, yeah. Or in my worldview. When we prayed, we prayed according to God's will. We talked to God, and of course we would say, you know, if it's your will, Lord, this thing be done, which is a whole different conversation, but we would pray and just ask God to do things. Heal this person. If they got healed, praise God. If they didn't get healed, God, thank you for this experience. You know know what's best or whatever. But there was never, if there's a demon here, if there's a cancer demon, can we cast out the cancer demon? Which is again what Brian what Brian believes. You know, one of the things, and you obviously it's very very clear in the video. But we talked to Brian for a really long time, and basically, I don't even know if this is still in there. The but nut out at hospital. The nut demon. She got a peanut demon. Well, I know that the, the peanut demon allergy demon joke. But it's not a really a joke. Demon. It was just an observation. <laughs> uh, is still in there, but. You said it kind of feels like there's demons everywhere. Yeah. And it almost got to this place where it was like the world feels a little bit meaningless. Like, is it true? From that, if, if your perspective is that demons are in everything and there's so many places like demons might be in this computer, or if, if, if somebody's looked at porn on my computer, boy, it wasn't me. <laughs> but if somebody's looked at porn on my computer, then there's like a porneia, porneia <laughs> demon on this computer, right? Or my phone. My phone's never. My phone's never seen porn. <laughs> why are you being so? Why are you so weird? So there's demons on this phone. <laughs> there's demons in books. There's demons in rocks. If there's demons everywhere, 
then God created a world in which the thing that's more real than the senses that he gave you to experience the world is something that's below the surface. I don't know, man. It's And, and the thing that you talked about was, or or, or we, we, I think we did keep this in the video where it was like, is it that like if I were to talk about the spells that I was casting and I'm talking about them in a- Right, fashion to make to the group. Okay. Way as if it's a chemical reaction. <laughs> that is, yeah. Um, I can do magic, but it's not technically magic. It's technically chemistry. You know what I'm saying? Does that mean the demons are like, we're cool? You're, you were talking about, yeah, does that, Suddenly, does that fool the demons? Well, and I was doing that because this is what Brian was, I, again, I think it's, it's important to talk about like what our, our position was as we entered the video. And mine was very much like clean slate. Like I'm going into it in this place where I can make myself really open to stuff. I, I'm, I'm, like if I'm going to hang out, if I'm going ghost hunting with a ghost hunter, I'm not going in there like some skeptic. I'm going in thinking, ghosts are real, I'm gonna see one. I spent the night at a haunted hotel and I was I was trying to make stuff happen. Like I was like, I'm open to it, ghost, if you're here, show yourself to me. Like, And I'm open to it, man, like I wanna see it. It's just more fun to live that way for me, right? So I was able to, I don't know where you were at, but I was able to put myself in a position where it was like, all right, I'm going into the situation thinking that anything that I have thought about this previously is I'm throwing it out the window and like this guy has this very specific perspective. We're bringing him in. We're saying that he's going to kind of advise us and these people are doing this thing. They're going to be a little bit uncomfortable with this guy talking about demon stuff, but we're going for it. Um, but it just really early in the process, it became very evident to me that we were just playing a game. Right. I thought, I just didn't, I, didn't, I never thought that demons might show up. I didn't think that he was going to say, don't do that. There's a, I thought he might say, there, I sense there's a demon here. You know, more of like a, like what a psychic who was channeling somebody. Like someone with the S name is trying to get through to someone about a pendant. Does anyone here not have a relative with an S? You know, a medium, medium, a medium. He doesn't, so he don't, he doesn't do that. But he didn't, he did. Well, he would, he would, I, he I would thought, directly condemn that. As a matter of fact, yes, he would. He would. I thought he would say, "Up, oh, there's a demon here. The shit's hitting the fan. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta start using my blow torture." So I didn't know. <laughs> but yeah, and then I was like, "Okay, this is just the only mess that we're gonna have to clean up is any relational mess here, and I'm here for that." You know, I didn't want to create it. But I wanted to create a space for it, <laughs> <laughs> you know. So that's what I was interested in: was what can happen? What's the interplay between these these people? And I was happy with where it landed because I felt like the approach was honest, and the results were pretty honest. The fact that like we played the game, it what nothing. Nobody was ultra offended on either side of it. And I don't know how many sides there actually were. Maybe at least three. But um, I don't know. Somehow, everybody was kind of brought a little bit closer together. You know? You tolerated your differences. Yeah. And when they were pretty prickly, and you might feel like you were getting, that was directed at me type of thing, one way or another. I felt like everybody just put their best foot forward, and we had a fun evening. Well, and to, that, to that, his credit, Brian, um, here's the thing about Brian, is that, yes, he believes very, very honestly and sincerely that demons are very active. And that Dungeons and Dragons should not, is not a good thing to play. Right. And, but even though he believes that, and he will tell you this is what he's basing that on. And um, he's not a jerk about it. He's not a jerk about it. You know, and he's not, uh, he, he was not judge, I mean, he's okay, judgmental in the sense that he's judging the things that are happening and saying, well, that's a demon or that's not a demon. But at no point did I feel, and I appreciate this about him, personally judged. And I don't think that, uh, he said anything 
necess- I mean, obviously just the fact that he believes these things, there's inherent judgment in that. If you're somebody who's like based your like professional career on D&D, like the people that we had there. So there's some Im- implied judgment. But I think that he was very gracious towards uh, the individuals who were there and was, you know, and by the end of it, he's like making noises and trying to, you know, be a part of things. And uh, so I well, still pre- remaining true to his beliefs. I appreciate that about him. I disagree with his his worldview. And I, and I don't think that there's, you know, I don't b- believe in it. I don't think that there's adequate evidence for it. Um, and I'm sure that we would disagree about many, many things. Uh, but in terms of the way that he interacted with us on a personal level, it was, you know, a lot of people who have done takedowns of me and you on the internet could learn a thing or two just about how, uh, you know, friendly he is. <laughs> yeah. You know? I don't know what he actually believed about me or you. You know, the fact that, like, yes, my tattoo, have, getting a tattoo is problematic. You know, in his opinion, getting a tattoo of Elvish, which is demonic writing, in his opinion, is problematic. It opens you up and it makes you friendly with the the demonic world. What do you think about the people who are going to say, well, even if I don't believe everything that Brian believes, I do believe in a spiritual realm. I do believe in demons more than you guys ever did and that they do have some sort of sway over people on some level, maybe it's not as ubiquitous as Brian believes it may, you know, maybe you fall in a slightly different place, but what about the kids? It's like, you're basically making light what of the kids. Huh? What about the kids? What about the children of the world that are watching our video? That's what is it? Did I answer your question? Yeah. Did you have a question? I just said, what about the kids? What about the kids who are watching our video? And, Obviously, Rhett and Link are not scared, and they're making light of the fact that there is a there's a spiritual realm, and some bad shit can go down there. And you're just you're you're an, anesthetizing them to it, anesthet whatever the word is. You're making them numb to it. You're making them open to it. That was really the practical crux of where Brian was coming from. It's like, yeah, even if there's not a demon here right now, we're kind of saying. Bring it on. So, I mean, that question has been asked not just about this video, but about us deciding to talk about these things in general, right? Right. And that question for me only makes sense and is only a legitimate question if your starting point is that Christianity is true, the Bible is true, and so anything that potentially undermines it is going to be bad for the kids. And I'm asking the question, and I'm not saying this, but how come it isn't the case that Christianity is bad for the kids? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying it is. What I'm saying is you have to cent- you have to center that question from a from a framework, from from a from a POV. And what about the kids? Well, what about the kids? You, you, like, is it better for the kids to grow up thinking that Dungeons and Dragons is a fun game powered by human imagination and, and cooperation? Hmm. Or is it better for them to think that it's crawling with demons or even might be crawling with demons and therefore they should stay away from that? And while they're at it, they should stay away from anything that any sort of talk of witchcraft. Why? I mean, if I had to if I had to put my foot down on one side of that issue right now, I would say I think it's much better for the kids to uh, see Dungeons and Dragons as a fun game of about imagination and cooperation. And I do think we did that. I mean, in making the video, we pretty much did that because we played it and we had a good time and we presented it in a fun light. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because I mean, and to answer that question, like on a holistic level, like if I didn't think that us talking about these things was more illuminating than it was debilitating, (laughs) we, we wouldn't do it. Like if I thought that 
us talking about these things, these spiritual things, and giving our perspective was a net negative for the people listening, well, yeah. I wouldn't talk about it. Right. You know, I'm not, we, we don't talk about these things, <laughs> despite the number of people who've said this, because there's more money in, 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 in being on, in, talking about these things and being. We're interested in it. You know, it's in the story. Like, in a story, you know, we, we'd probably we, we would probably if it turns out that I, you know, we lose a lot of followers every time we talk about this stuff. It's like there's not there's not great money in criticizing, um, in talking sort of critically about the most popular religion in the world and the mo- overwhelmingly the most popular religion in your own country, which is where our audience is mostly. Like, there's not great money in that, FYI. Um, so, you, but we're but we're not that, that we're just yeah. we're just talking from our, you know, we're just being honest about things. Um, we're talking from our mouths and from our asses sometimes. Yeah, oh, most of the time from our yeah, asses. Let's be real. So, I don't believe in demons, but I'd like to be open to believing in ghosts. But I'm I, I'm not really I don't really believe that either. But I know there's a lot of people who do, and there's there's just like are there are there other realms? Are there other levels of the, that we're just like we just have little hints of their of the existence of other planes of existence, spiritual or otherwise? Well, you if, know, if there is some, if there are other planes of existence that through some sense that we don't yet quite understand, we have the ability to tap into and. Some people have the ability to tap into it more readily than others. Then, if that's true, which I'm very open to that being a possibility, when we talk about creativity, we're talking about receiving creative ideas from some external source. I mean, we use the term spiritual or supernatural because it's beyond just the physical, you know, a materialistic understanding of the world. I'm very open to that. But what's more likely? Is it more likely that if there is some sort of thing that can be tapped into, that it's really hard to understand what that is and people experience it and then people try to define it and put it in a box and that's where religion comes from? And that's why if you go all around the world, just within, we just demonstrated the how not monolithic Christianity is, there's so many different perspectives just within this one faith. And then once you move beyond that into these other faiths and they have, people are experiencing weird shit and people are trying to explain it, trying to reconcile it, trying to systematize it so that they can relay it and talk about it and write it down in a book somewhere. But I'm just saying that probably, you know, from a probabilistic standpoint, if that stuff happens, your individual perspectives on it are probably just wrong, probably mistaken. And so that's why I'm not coming to any hard conclusions about it. Well, I don't think playing Dungeons and Dragons makes you demonic. I think it. I think it does make you a little open to those concepts. And then if you start getting into that part of it, like, oh, I'm gonna start reading about demons and stuff, you might start believing. I don't know what it could. You know, anything could lead to something for somebody, depending on. You know, it's just like, oh, don't don't even think about that because who knows what it could lead to. It's like. Well, but I don't think I don't think there's I think a much better argument could be made about like certain types of music with certain subject matter, right? So if if there's like okay, you're listening to music right that is celebrating murder, the murder or murder. torture. Yeah. Right? Okay, if you're if you're like singing like this about torturing somebody. Well, first of all, you could be singing real pretty about it. No, but I'm just saying, let's just say I that got you're- in the torture device. No, let's say you're getting really worked up. Yeah. And you're like appealing to the lowest common denominator. Now, one theory is that by getting that out through music, you're less likely to do it in the real world. I don't know. Or maybe you're like, you know, you're leaning into that and then yes, that could somehow like, influence your behavior. I, I could see how the case could be made for that. But Dungeons and Dragons isn't doing any of that. It's completely based in this idea that because there's warlocks and witches and magic, and those things are in, labeled in the Bible as evil and of the devil, it's just because those things were part of the game. Yeah. 
the so, game just was like, oh, it's all bad. It's opening yourself up to these. But like, no, you're just, it's an imaginary world. It's like playing Zelda. And which I guess, again, is still a bad thing if you follow that logic all the way. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah, there's so many games now for so many different reasons that like you could, again, it's like, it was Dungeons and Dragons, then it was Harry Potter, and now it's like everything you can shake a stick at is probably something that's, I mean, yeah, definitely for Brian is gonna be demonic. And you gotta stay away from it. That's why I ended up asking him, and it's not in the edit, it was like, in, in a world where you're encountering demonic activity at every turn, every turn, it's like, what is that? What kind of life is that? Like, I would be a wreck, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Where, 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 where's the fun? And he was like, well, I, I, have, I have fun in, in having power over them. Maybe there's an answer in that. It's like, you know, it, it's, he has, you know, he was so cool, calm, and collected. He wasn't afraid. You know, so it's nice to believe all these things when then you can believe, oh, but I've, you know, I have power over this through Jesus. Jesus has power over this and has given me access to it, however you want to say it. Um, maybe that is a really good feeling for some people. I mean, I, I don't, our video and now at this point, I don't want to either like start to psychoanalyze any more of like what draws people to certain beliefs, whether it's like Brian's belief system or people who play Dungeons and Dragons. Well, but it's, I mean, first of all, uh, humans, it, it is, has been reinforced through many, many generations that it's beneficial to attach some sort of agency or some sort of reason to things that you don't understand, like to define things, right? Like there's a survival mm. uh, uh, advantage to believing that there's a lion in the bushes when you hear something move, right? Like that you... You actually gain a survival advantage by extrapolating and defining. And most people, and we're we, we're, we're two of them, by the way, because we're people. I'd say all people yeah, we are. have a tendency to want to just, you know, like not just rest in this uncertainty. Like it's, I don't know what Brian's day to day is, but like he wakes up and goes throughout his day, and there's no uncertainty for him, at least as as he communicates or on the surface, of like the things that he experienced. It's just like, that's a demon, and this is a demon, that's a demon. And I'm kind of living in a place where it's like, well, some, uh, you know, I woke up from a nap and had an idea, and then somebody in the next room had the same idea. What, is there something going on there? I don't know. I'll lean into that a little bit. Like, some people are just not comfortable with kind of living in that, Lev that level of uncertainty where you, you want to define it, you want to pin it down because it's just easier to go on with your life if you can just be like, okay, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to establish th this. You know, there is a God and um, you, you know, this religion that I'm a part of is true. And it's like, I, I, I'm going to, let me get these things in place so I can just go on and live my life. And I just think there's a temptation for everybody to sort of come to a conclusion. Like there's a temptation for us, I think, and I can hear it in you in the way that you talk about these things, to just be like, it's all fake. You know what I'm saying? It's just not, none of this stuff right. is real. This is all just people's minds playing tricks on them. And it's it'd be easier to just be like, that's right. It's all people's minds playing tricks on them. The human mind has an incredible capacity I'm just, for imagination. Yeah, yeah. And, I'm, that, and everything can be explained through just the power of people's imagination and their, their ability to you know, rationalize and manipulate their own thoughts. And I'm going to just be an atheist and just move on with my life. And I'm tempted to do that at times. Oh, yeah. It's easy. And I'd like, that's my, that's my, that's where I, unless I make active decisions to be open, that's just where I fall back. I fall back into that. And I would say that, that version of certainty. But I would say that, on, like, on, from a practical standpoint, the only thing that I'll ever, like, stake my claim on or, tr like, really try to defend. Are, are things that I, I can prove. I'm, I'm on, like, I will try to convince you, like I'm not gonna do it on a regular basis and I don't do it on the internet really, but like if somebody asked me in my personal life what I think about 
evolution, for instance, because I think there's so much great evidence for it, and I think it's an important thing to understand and believe. I'll I'll talk to them about that because I think that that that's not a real questionable area. That's like a pretty obvious thing. But like then there's stuff like this, like well, what's happening when two people have, uh, you know, two twins have some crazy experience across the globe, mm-hmm. right? And there's all these evidence, all this evidence of it. It's like, uh, well, I'm not going to say that's their mind playing tricks on them because. It, it, you know, it who seems are like you to it, say? Yeah, it seems like it happens right. too who you, often. Who are we to say? Yeah, and there must be something else going on, or maybe there is. I'm open to that. I'm not going to try to convince you of it, though. I can't wait to see what the comments are <laughs> on the video and also on this one. You know, um, anything else that we experienced? And Jenna, pipe in here because you were there all along the way too. Like anything else that we experienced from just a people might be interested to know, inquiring minds want to know mm-hmm. uh, in terms of the the process. Uh, no one was harmed uh, with the uh, lighting of the flamethrower and no property either. Nope. Everyone was totally fine. Yeah, yeah. it's that the flamethrower was, was originally moment. designed to be done outside, but it was raining. Yes. And so we were like, let's do it in the fireplace. And when it happened, it was very intense. But watching it back, you see just how high the flames leap <laughs> out of the fireplace up onto like the speaker <laughs> underneath the TV. <laughs> and again, it's just a flash of fire. It's not going to do anything. <laughs> and he seemed to have a, a lot of control over it. But he there was a certain seem, level of trust. He seemed to wanted to keep doing it. I love the fact that he did it twice. And yeah, then we, and like, then ah, we, that's enough. And then we found that footage uh, that we use at the beginning, which it's like a Canadian those dudes, television man. show. Again, I think this is where I think some people would be like, "Oh, Rhett and Link are te- trying to tear down the Christians," you know, because like we show this ridiculous video from the '80s <laughs> and the way that the guy like talks. I yeah. think we we were talking about his bottom lip. Uh, being very wet most of the time <laughs> that he was he was speaking. <laughs> Nothing against the guy. I'm just saying that like uh, it was hard not to notice that. And you know, well, he, Ben put a he he did like a side camera effect that then goes around. Maybe it de-emphasized the but, wet lip. You know, you got these guys who, even when we were very very strong professional Christians, even missionaries. We would have been like these guys are. We would have. We would have thought they were hilarious. We would have thought those guys in that opening right. video were hilarious. You know, right. I'd be like, yeah, we'd probably kind of agree with them on some level. But like, I mean, they're ridiculous characters. And Thank so God funny. for dispensationalism. Uh, but it, they mentioned in that opening video about the demons escaping the objects and, and screaming. Yeah, you know, I was like, oh man, we got to put a scream in. In the dice. In the di- the burning dice at the end. It was just a great <laughs> bookend. It's beautiful, man. And we haven't talked to Brian since then. We're, we don't have an active relationship with Brian. You know, we knew him in the moment. And well, you know, I think- We made some memories and that was it. I think we utilized the services. Yep, uh, we did. And um, like I, like you said, I think he spoke for himself. He, he And I don't know what he thinks of the video. He, uh, he, he, he said what he yet. said. Yep. Did what he did. Uh, right. It was very consistent with his um, perspective. And I'm sure that there are people who are, in, you know, feel as if they are in need of some sort of help in fighting the demons. Are you in their about life. to recommend Brian? Nope. I'm just saying. As your wreck? I'm just saying that it's, it's kind of an ine- inevitable consequence of. Hey, we use an exorcist and people know where to find him. So we, okay, so we got. You're going to recommend him, and you're going to recommend you're going to have equal recommendations. I'm not recommending him, and then you're going to recommend. I'm just saying that <laughs> it was sort of implied. Uh, you can go see where he's at. What's your rec then? My rec is that you play Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Really, I mean, uh, that was it was fun. Yeah. I uh, and it was you know it was a little bit of an interesting introduction to the game. Uh, typically, an exorcist will not be present when you're playing. I would think. It's up to you though. Um, and the main thing holding me back from it, of course, is that 
you know, we know people who play on a regular basis and it is a time commitment. And that is something that we do not have in our lives right. at this point. Yeah. But maybe at some point we will. Uh, I could see how once you really understood the ins and outs of the game and uh, being with a, a, you know, Lamar was a great dungeon master to see that on display. I know, you know, Science Mike, our friend, is a great dungeon master. We've never seen him in action, but I can kind of imagine how, how good he would be as well. Yeah. Um, but I think that I, re I highly recommend it. So find your local D and D group, however, however that's done. <laughs> oh, a demon just left you. <laughs> Another demon just left you. Oh no, I think it was he, he was only half out. Is he out With now? The first sneeze. Yeah, took two sneezes. <laughs> Get him all the way out. His hoofs were caught. He, he's gonna come back in. No one said bless you. Bless you. Bless you. <laughs> Brian did say that. When you sneeze, when you yawn, burp. When, when you, you burp, burp, these are these are de these could be demons coming out of you. And with that, let us know what you think. Hashtag Ear Biscuits, wherever hashtags are used, and call in and let us know how you're, how you, how the video struck you and this conversation. One eight 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 Earpod One. Can we end this with a flamethrower? It's like. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, Rhett and Link, this is Race Knutson calling from Salt Lake City, Utah. I was listening to the podcast and I jumped in and left a, a voicemail earlier because I was super excited about Rhett's scuba certification, but I should have listened to the whole thing through because Link's story was so funny and so unfortunate, but I called my wife who works at Park City and she was confirming that they do incentivize the catching of people who are using someone else's pass. So that is just, it's all it is, is just a way for the resort to make more money, really, when it comes down to it, even though it's like, yeah, Link paid for it, and he was just sort of, you know, it was, all the passes were paid for by him, he was just taking the day. That's one of their ways to make extra money, so we empathize with you, Link. To watch more Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist on the right. To watch the previous episode of Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist to the left. And don't forget to click on the circular icon to subscribe. If you prefer to listen to this podcast, it's available on all your favorite podcast platforms. Thanks for being your mythical best.